Kia ora bros and girls, welcome back to the channel. We're back with chapter two, map two. Um, so Sorcerer Supreme was, you know, he was, they were a little bit interesting. Um, but this one, uh, we are actually going to run with pretty much exactly the same team uh, because I think the boss is gonna be Dormammu and this team uh, is perfect for it. I could probably pull Quake out and put Ghost Rider um, to give us a bit of an extra advantage, but um, I think we should be all right as we are. So we are gonna go through, I don't know if there's one path or if it splits, but um, we're gonna do plain vanilla here and just go straight to, um, to Dormammu. So Blade worked out really, really well against Sorcerer Supreme. And um, I might do like a little bit of a breakdown if you guys are struggling with her, um, but you shouldn't be because she is pretty straightforward. Uh, of course, if you bring the wrong character, um, you will get slammed, but hopefully you haven't brought the wrong characters and you've brought some good counters to her, but there are many to counter as Sorcerer Supreme. But tell you what, I wouldn't mind pulling her as um, as a five star. I think she'd have a lot of use, particularly in end, uh, end game content. And I suspect actually she'll have pretty high prestige as well when she is released. So um, you know, I've got a few. I've got a few Mystic Crank Up gems. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I'll save them for her. Um, I'm not too sure about her awakening ability, to be honest. Uh, I also have two Mystic Awakening gems from Variants, and I'm not sure whether to use it on them, uh, on her, or probably save one for Doom. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. Uh, so Hela, I guess we can use Mephisto for this one. Not that I'm going to use Mephisto against uh, Dormammu. Well pretty unlikely that I will but you know I don't mind having a Mephisto that's full of uh, persistent charges and I probably should have used SP3 actually but that's okay because I'm gonna get another chance to use it so that's fine Okay, I was kind of hoping that I could get her to use more power so I can actually power drain it with the SP3, but that's not going to be the case. But I might do it here actually. That way. Oh, I thought it actually imprisons her, but I guess it doesn't, so that's fine. Um, okay, a little bit of a long fight, but... Well, there we go, we take our charge. Not too problematic at all. And we'll continue going forward. Um, so we have Rhino. Probably should have brought Ghost Rider. Actually, I would have had a lot of um, a lot of danger sense against all these villains. But uh, I guess Hulk isn't a villain, so. But I would have definitely had danger sense against Rhino, which would have made this fight easier. But so long as I keep him stuck in the corner here, he is pretty much easy to deal with. One thing with Rhino is you don't want to give him space. You kind of want to choke him. Same, um, same kind of um, strategy that you need for Supernova and uh, Annihilus. If you let them dash at you, it's pretty much game over. But if you keep them in the corner, it's easy. So I think one more SP2 here and we should be able to take care of him. And I might do one more combo actually. 
Draw that to SP2. Is that enough? Yep, just enough. Okay, so here's where the road splits into a million different pieces. Um, I guess A is kinetic transference, and they're all mystics, so what the hell, let's do A. Uh, I'll just use a full energy boost, that's fine. I've got, a, I've got one expiring anyway. Um, so let's take Mephisto into this one. With kinetic transference, I, I don't particularly want to be blocking too much. I just want to kind of maybe push her to her SP1 and evade that. The auto block will be a little bit annoying though, but that's okay. Just hang out until that fury, yep, or not. I was gonna say until that fury expires, but um, as long as those three furies are down, then she becomes quite easy to deal with. And here we will. Yep, thank God for the regions. Um, the good thing is, now that we had, don't have those persistent charges anymore, um, I could just use the SP1. I normally try to avoid using the SP1 because um, you don't want to waste the souls, but now I don't really care. But she's almost dead anyway, so not a big deal. There we go. Thanks for coming. And then the next couple should be a little bit easier, a little bit quicker with Blade. Uh, Black Widow is another one that I would love to pull as a 5 star. It's got a lot of uses, a lot of cool skills, um, a lot of good utility. And she actually, I think, has uh, a pretty strong awakened ability, if I'm not mistaken. But she still can't deal with Blade, so. That's gonna be pretty straightforward. We'll move on to magic. Um, yep, so we'll come back in with Blade. So Blade will do a lot of work in this month, in this month of quest, um, particularly in chapter two. I think this synergy is probably gonna be one of the most useful for you if you're running only four stars. If you're running five stars, it's probably not gonna to matter too much who you use. Um, because I feel like, I feel like these monthly quests are getting easier and easier. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, even even since I've been doing the four star uh, four star challenge, um, I've noticed even with four stars, the difficulties have been coming down. So I definitely think there's room for uh, another difficulty on top of uncollected. Uh, okay, cool. So we have Dormammu. Everybody knows what Dormammu is all about, but he's. Uh, in, Immune to ability accuracy, so actually Danger Sense will not um, stop that. He's also immune to debuffs, interesting, which means we can't stun him. Uh, incinerate, uh, it's 40% more effective, that's fine. SP2 is unblockable, Transducer and Languor. So, I mean, Quake will not be fantastic because she's not gonna gain power. Void needs to use power constantly against him. We'll try with Blade to begin with, and if that doesn't work, then we're gonna come up with another solution. But I think Blade here will probably be 
um, will probably be our best bet. And it looks like the danger sense, sense actually does stop the that immunity debuffs. So maybe he isn't immune. Uh, that's not what we wanted to do at all. I thought we were going to get to SP2, but um, we're totally going to die here. Yep. Immediately dead. Um, and that's because of that um, Languor, Languor, whatever the node is called. Um, basically, this one here, where power empties to zero, you suffer 240%. So this is basically will we'll kill you straight away. Um, so I probably should not have done that at all. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll use Void. Um, I could also use Starkey, but um, I think Void should be able to easily deal with this guy. Now I suspect... that my SP1... Yep, that does work, that's fine. So it seems like you can actually stun him. So he's not actually immune to debuffs. So I don't know what that's all about. Void doing work, but uh, Void is also almost about to die. So what you do, you don't particularly want to dex against this guy, but you do want to parry and dex. Because the minute you dex, he's going to degenerate you. And that's not really what you want. Um, well, Void did a fair deal of damage there. Um, so our two options here are Quake or Spidey. I think I'm going to use Spidey. Problem is... With Spidey having Dex, we're going to take a lot of Dejan damage. So instead of Dexing, we're just going to go for the jugular here. And that takes care of Dormammu. Nice and easy. So this one's actually probably a little bit easier than chapter two, map one. Um, hopefully it helped you guys out. If it did, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, but yeah, there's a variety of good counters for this guy. Uh, obviously Blade, Void, um, Luke Cage. You could you could smash this guy with Luke Cage. Uh, Human Torch would also destroy him completely with his incinerate. So lots and lots of good um, science options against this guy. All right, guys, um, hopefully it helps, and we'll see you in the next one. Kakite ano, bros and girls.